With me today, I have a very special guest on the Lifestyle Today program, Dr. Michael Colgan from the Colgan Institute in Canada. Dr. Michael Colgan is a world-renowned scientific expert on aging and nutrition. He has a PhD in nutrition and has authored over 21 books. And um, his latest books is, uh, book is called Anti-Inflammatory Athlete at Any Age. Just to mention some of his books, Beat Arthritis, Protect Your Prostate, Sports Nutrition Guide, New Power Program, I guess that's for athletes, yes. um, You Can Prevent Cancer, and his um, popular, popular book is Save Your Brain. So Dr. Colgan, welcome to Australia. Thank you very much. Mary. And thank you so much for taking the time to be on my program. It's, it's a pleasure. Awesome. I have been following you for the last 15 years. Yes. Oh, good. So, um, you know, that's how <laughs> he's been around for a long, long time. And I have learned lots from you. So as we go through the interview, we want to talk about the athletes that you have trained, but particularly you're traveling all around Australia and you're talking about brain and how we can yes. really save our brain and be yes. the healthiest individuals. Right. Okay, so in Australia now, as you may know, we have over 280,000 people diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. What's happening to our country? How can we help these people? Well, nobody really can pinpoint the cause, but in most westernised countries, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, yeah. Alzheimer's has gone from being a, a fairly rare disease to now in the United States, it's the sixth leading cause of death. Wow. And we think it has a lot to do with what we've done to the environment. Mm -hmm. The pollutants in the air, the water, the food. And of course the population is living longer, so there's more time for dementia to start. Right. But the most important thing, the reason that I'm emphasizing it, is uh, that we're unprepared for it. The world is unprepared for it, the Western world. In fact, there was a dementia conference in Melbourne on 23rd of February, really? in which the, uh, the head of uh, Alzheimer's Australia said it is a tidal wave. It's going to go up 80% in the next few years. So what, what causes that? Why, why is there such a big number? Well, we think that it is what we've done to our food and what we've done to our environment. Yes. Because they've accelerated the degeneration of the brain. The brain is very tough, but um, there are many toxins in our environment now that our DNA was not experienced with when it evolved, mm -hmm. and therefore these toxins are absorbed and taken up by the brain and other organs um, with no defense. Uh, the, the best one that I know, best example, is carbon monoxide from car exhausts. Right. Carbon monoxide is recognized by our DNA as hemoglobin. So it's taken straight into the bloodstream okay. and will kill you without even the body making any type of defense. That's shocking. Our yes. car is killing us. Yes, okay. that is the main major pollutant in Australia is the family car. Yeah, and we have two cars per household yes. these days. Not just one, so we're creating <laughs> our own problems, really, right. aren't we? Right. And we're not doing anything to combat that. It's very difficult, of course, I'm all for green, clean energy and you know, electric cars and things, but the transition is very slow. So we have to try and do something to protect the brain uh, in that interim period. Yes. Um, you are 72 years yeah. young. <laughs> so well, it does work. It does work. <laughs> so we want to sort of, I know you're going to be presenting this in the seminar here today, yeah. but we just want to pick your brain and just say, you know, how do you stay that young and so vibrant and strong? Because I saw you doing some one-arm push-ups on the weekend oh, at the conference. Right. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants to know the training program to that. Well, the uh, training is what I use with the top athletes. Mm -hmm. It's what we've developed for elite athletes, but it works with anyone. That's why I wrote the book, The Anti-Inflammatory Athlete at Any Age. Works with people at all levels. Mm -hmm. It's not what is commonly done in gyms and uh, in training, okay. but it's what I've done with the strongest men in the world, two of the fastest men in the world, Donovan Bailey and, and Leroy Burrell, both were on my programs when they broke the world 100 meters record. Wow, that's so, amazing. 
As you say, they're not typical things that you would see at the gym. No, they're not. I, I saw a picture of you. You were doing um, some cable work. Yes. Standing on a ball. And how many can we say of our typical 30-year-old males <laughs> that would go to the gym and just, you know, do some stability work as well as some strength, really? Right. Well, of yeah. course, everything comes from our feet, our whole balance. Yeah. And if the balance of an athlete is off by one hair, right. that means that they have to correct each stride what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many people who try and run or do play sport, they have to correct themselves each stride instead of being balanced. So mm -hmm. one of the first things that we try to do is teach balance. But it's got to be balanced under stress. It's not just balancing like an acrobat. It's, it's balancing while you are dealing with a load. Resistance. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, I was inspired by it, and I know um, there's only a certain amount of people that will be able to do that. So I think there'll be a lot of personal trainers, you know, wanting to know more. We've got exercise physiologists and sports people. <laughs> Don't try this at home. Right. Me. It's, it's um, it, that that large Swiss ball can go from under you in a split second. Yes. And will come. Ah. I know. I work with one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, it just depends. There's only a handful of people that I can have them doing, um, you know, squats on the ball as, right. as you have done but you or whatever. Start but, yeah, the Bosu ball. Yeah. Ball. Mm, mm, absolutely. Now you have trained many, many athletes, and um, I just want to mention a few of them because even just mentioning a few of them, uh -huh. it's. it's <laughs> yeah, but let's particularly talk about Dig Telford um, oh, with the dear. Australian Institute of Sport. Yes. Uh, what did you do with him? Well, no, I didn't train Dick. Dick trained me. Oh, Dick trained you? Yeah, I okay. went to the Australian Institute of Sport. Yes. And he taught me, with the 1980 Olympic swim team, okay. how to take lactic acid samples from a swimmer's ear and how to calculate. And I've used it ever since. Dick's okay. a great friend of mine. Oh, fantastic. Okay, yeah. well, you might have to get back in there and help. Well, he did. Well. Rob Di Costello. Yes. And Rob still holds the Australian, after more than 20 years, the Australian half marathon record Rob Di Costello still holds. So. Wow. Okay, fantastic. Well, I just want to also say that this interview is being going to be uh, recorded and it's on podcast. So for the purpose of people who are seeing this on YouTube, um, you can look it up and um, find it out on www.marybacon.com. And it's an interview that's being recorded for a live 90.5 on the Lifestyle Today program 